Hey Team Bio, so today's screencast is on enzyme structure and function. So we've talked a little bit about um, enzymes. You know that enzymes are um, generally proteins. So There are some enzymes that are RNA. Um, and enzymes take on a very specific shape. So I'm going to draw for you an enzyme. And know that the enzyme I'm drawing, this is an artistic representation of the enzyme and not the actual enzyme itself. It doesn't, in reality, look exactly like this, um, but, oh, come on, okay, copy, paste, and then, I guess I want to paste this here. This, this, and this, and this. I apologize, this would definitely be more fun if you had an iPad at home. Uh, doink. Doink. Probably should have just drawn this in advance. Next year, they're gonna have a much better class than you have now. Wait, no. I wanna keep that one. I wanna erase this one. This, 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 and then this. Okay, so now. Oh, wait, whoops. Okay, so here is my enzyme. I definitely should have drew this before. <laughs> um, okay, this is my enzyme. It is called sucrose phosphate synthase. Um, I've drawn it as a little box. Uh, actually, I'm going to put this here, and I guess I'll refer to it henceforth as SPS, sucrose phosphate synthase. Um, so I've drawn it in a, kind of in a three-dimensional structure, and this part of the enzyme is the place where the action happens. It's called active site. And this three-dimensional box structure that I've drawn here is actually created by a linear sequence of amino acids. So if I were to zoom way in on this box and see what it's actually made up of, I would see that there is a sequence of amino acids all connected by peptide bonds, which are covalent bonds, making a linear chain at the most basic level, and then folded into this complex three-dimensional structure. And the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme is what allows it to do its job, which is to catalyze reactions. Um, okay, so these are representing individual amino acids. 
Remember, there are 20 different types of amino acids, and when we string them together into a long linear chain, we create a um, poly... Uh, what do we create? The word is eluding me. It's not a polysaccharide. It's a polypeptide. Uh, duh. Okay, so when we string them into a long linear chain, we get a polypeptide, but when we fold them into a three-dimensional shape, we get a functional protein. In this case, it's an enzyme. Um, so I'm not going to draw this linear, I'm not going to expand this linear chain out, but know that this whole structure, this whole box-like structure, is composed of amino acids making up the structure itself. Um, okay, so why am I telling you this? Well, we're going to talk about the induced fit model for enzyme action down below, which is a model, a generally accepted model of how enzymes do their job of catalyzing reactions. Um, okay, so we'll start out with the enzyme, sucrose phosphate synthase, right here. Uh, I've drawn a simplified version of this three-dimensional structure here, right here, but know that I've only drawn it kind of as a 2D object here, but know that it actually has this three-dimensional shape. Um, it's not flat. Um, okay, so sucrose phosphate synthase. It has an active site or two active sites here. And these active sites are a perfect fit for the reactants that this um, enzyme uh, catalyzes the reaction for. They are glucose and fructose. So generally in a chemical reaction, we call the things on the uh, left side of the equation reactants. Um, but when we're talking about how they interact with an enzyme, we call them substrates. So substrates are the reactants of uh, our reactants for an enzyme. Okay, so there are just substrates, glucose and fructose, hanging out in the aqueous solution, and they are the perfect fit for the active sites of sucrose phosphate synthase. So remember, glucose was a six-sided ring and fructose was a five-sided ring, and they had different orientations of their hydroxyls, either going up or down relative to the ring. And this shape of sucrose phosphate synthase is so specific that only glucose is going to bind here and only fructose is going to bind here. So that's exactly what happens. Glucose and fructose diffuse into solution or diffuse around in the solution, and eventually they bump into the enzyme and they bind the enzyme. Um, so this is the step where substrates enter the active site. When sucrose phosphate synthase has its two substrates bound to it, it undergoes a change of shape. So, now you'll notice that the orientation of glucose and fructose has changed. These two substrates are right next to each other. So this is what we call a conformational change. I just want to make sure I'm spelling this right. Conformational change. Okay. C-O-N-4. So this is a conformational change. It's a shape change of the enzyme. And it's orienting the two substrates right in the exact right position for the bond between glucose and fructose to form. So you know, there was a very specific hydroxyl on glucose and a very specific hydroxyl on fructose that were involved in the dehydration synthesis reaction. So this enzyme puts them exactly in the right place in order for the reaction to take place. If it is a reaction that requires the input of energy, 
then there's also going to be ATP involved in this reaction. ATP is going to provide the reaction, the energy for the reaction to go forward. If it is a reaction that releases energy, then sometimes just having the substrates in exactly the right position is enough to make this reaction move forward and happen. Um, okay, so the result of this conformational change and putting the substrates in exactly the right position is glucose and fructose are now bound together. And as you know, this is the product sucrose. And additionally, water. Oh, not water, it's just a water. A water is formed. So these are the products. And the enzyme releases uh, the products after it's catalyzed the reaction. So notice what happens next. Sucrose phosphate synthase, once it releases sucrose in water, it turns back into its original shape. And this is important because um, we said before that the... I think it was in our last screencast, one of our definitions of an enzyme is that it catalyzes the chemical reaction. Um, it's, it speeds up the rate of reaction by lowering the energy of activation, by putting the substrates in exactly the right place. And then we also said that it's not consumed itself in the reaction. So it can continue to catalyze this reaction as long as it has substrate. So sucrose phosphate synthase will continue to make sucrose and water as long as it has free glucose and fructose in solution. The enzyme itself is not consumed in the reaction. It can continue to do this as long as there is substrate. Um, okay, that's it for the induced fit model. This is a relatively short screencast, despite the fact I had you draw this monstrosity, which I should not have. Apologize. Um, okay, see you on class next week.